you have probably seen on several occasions how people place Star Wars within the science fiction genre. However, the saga has a notable amount of fantasy concepts. There is magic, powers, extraordinary abilities, etc. So things are not so clear and there is some debate around this. On the one hand, science fiction tells stories with real scientific theories that could come to pass, while fantasy plays with supernatural ideas and inexplicable aspects. Star Wars has spaceships, space travel, aliens, robots, etc. However, it also has the aforementioned fantasy elements. Therefore, what genre would the franchise belong to? It has always been framed in space opera, a subgenre of science fiction focused on space adventures. Although this still does not convince everyone, a film can include components of one or the other and that does not mean that it is if the central theme is something else. For this reason, the creator's intentions are important in determining the genre of the work. Are the science fiction parts in the background in Star Wars or are the fantasy components? Could it be a hybrid? In an interview for Rolling Stone in 1977, George Lucas confessed that, I was afraid that sci-fi fans and everyone would say things like, you know there's no sound in outer space? And he added that he simply wanted to forget about science. In his opinion, Stanley Kubrick already made the definitive science fiction film with 2001, A Space Odyssey. He finds it difficult for someone to come and do something better. So he, I wanted to make a space fantasy that was more in the Edgar Rice Burroughs genre. That whole other extreme of space fantasy that existed before science took it over in the 50s. Then he qualified that thought even more. I think speculative fiction is very valid, but they forgot about fairy tales, dragons, Tolkien and all the real heroes. In short, Lucas not only did not want to make a science fiction saga, but he wanted to focus on the fantastic directly defining Star Wars as a space fantasy. You could perfectly say that Star Wars is a space fantasy, but there is hardly any information about it as a film genre. If you're not persuaded by its creator's intentions, you might be better off calling it science fantasy. As its name indicates, science fantasy brings together characteristics of science fiction and fantasy. Other examples that could be considered such are Dune or Arcane. In the end, nothing is clear and everything depends on your opinion. In fact, not all the movies, video games, books and comics in this franchise focus on the same themes. Some give more importance to the concept of the Force, others to the action of space adventures, war between ships, etc. Star Wars is one of the most successful film franchises in history. Its universe is immense and a large number of stories have been told in different formats movies, series, comics, video games and novels. Therefore, it is not surprising the good number of impressive creatures that the saga has had. Many of them with quite interesting stories. The planets are home to curious animals, both rational and irrational, with their own unique characteristics. These are the most incredible. Fans of The Mandalorian will know this creature, as it was once written by Mandalorians. In fact, Mandalorians often have their image on their armor. They are believed to be extinct, although thanks to their skeletons it is known that they were enormous. Mythosaurs are very unknown creatures. There is a whole legend about mythosaurs. This would have supposedly been the dominant species on the planet Mandalore for many years. More information about them will probably be given in the following seasons of the Mandalorian series. An anthropomorphic animal with a lot of hair, although taller and much stronger than a human. Kashyyyk is their home planet. This race was enslaved by a weapons manufacturing company that was at the service of the Empire. Slavery was much more direct after the fall of the Republic because they were forced to work to build the Death Star. A story that has been discussed several times in movies, games and comics. Wookiees have suffered a lot in the Star Wars universe. These adorable little beings from the Star Wars saga fought alongside the Rebel Alliance in the Battle of Endor. But perhaps most interesting is their own culture. They have a primitive culture, but, as could be seen in the spin-off The Ewok Adventure, they maintain their own rules and a very close relationship with nature. However, 
the Ewok adventure is now non-canon following Disney's purchase. However, although the film gave a lot of information about how Ewoks live, it is also a very typical creature from the Star Wars saga. Ewoks live in tribes and perform spiritual rituals. George Lucas took inspiration from the Vietnam War to create these beings. The Ewoks would be a representation of how the Vietnamese defeated the United States. Unlike all the Star Wars creatures on this list, Huts can speak and communicate perfectly with humans. Although they have their own language, this race lives on the planet Nal Hut and is often involved in organized crime. The Huts are known for their business with criminals. They are intelligent and immune to force mind control. A Star Wars creature found on Tatooine. It was known before, but could be seen in the second season of The Mandalorian. Apart from being large animals, they also spit acid through their mouths. As expected, crate dragons pose a danger to anyone who lives near where they live. Despite their danger, they are highly desired animals because they hide very rare and valuable pearls inside. It is undeniable that Star Wars is one of the most influential film franchises in history. So much so, that the saga is still very much alive today and continues to expand in other formats, series, video games and comics. Although not all success comes from the movies, since merchandising played an important role in George Lucas's strategy to promote this franchise. George Lucas knew how to see that, to build an entire universe. It was necessary to also create a good amount of merchandising to build a community with a strong feeling of belonging. The saga began in 1977 with Star Wars IV. A New Hope. The studios did not accept the director's script, but he managed to convince 20th Century Fox. For this film, Lucas asked that his salary be lowered in exchange for being granted the rights to merchandising and possible sequels, according to Forbes. Fox probably accepted Lucas's proposal because they didn't expect everything that was going to come. While it is true that the film was very well received at the box office, most of the income came from the sale of toys. As mentioned in Pure Marketing, Disney had already made merchandising an essential source of income for the company long before this saga. However, Star Wars popularized it, taking advantage of the fact that it would become a cultural phenomenon and really selling it as a necessity for fans, as collectibles. Time mentions that George Lucas practically created the collectibles market. This was the way to create a need among the community to buy everything that comes out about the franchise, especially the action figures. Obviously, the creation of a universe is an important factor for that community to want to buy things related to the franchise. And to a large extent, this is also achieved by making fans feel like they are part of the creation of this universe. According to Integra Technology, one of the innovative marketing techniques that Lucas introduced for his saga was cross-promotion. This technique consists of doing cross-promotions together with another company. For example, Burger King sells Star Wars figures or glasses, something that benefits both parties. This practice has been very common in the franchise over the years. Additionally, merchandising has worked very well to maintain community loyalty. While other movies simply go out of style, Star Wars has been kept alive over the years in large part by all the franchise merchandise sold. In this sense, the stories of comics, books, and video games play an essential role. Disney bought Star Wars in 2012 and, to truly make it profitable, they expanded the saga further with a new trilogy and made series, comics and video games from there. An effective way to revive for many more years a saga that essentially lived on merchandising. For all this, it is difficult to imagine that Star Wars will one day go out of fashion. <laughs>